Hi everyone, this is Dan, and uh, this is the Fantastic Four number uh, 232 uh, by John Byrne. <laughs> so uh, this will be a really quick review as this is uh, just simply I'm kind of going over the first issue of Fantastic Four with John Byrne on it. Uh, this was way back in the 80s. Uh, so John Byrne's run on Fantastic Four is uh, legendary, uh, very well regarded, and uh, considered one of the best Fantastic Four runs. Uh, probably behind uh, just Stan and, and Jack Kirby's original Fantastic Four run. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go over this comic real fast because I'm actually going to go over a uh, channel update and a lot of art that I want to go over uh, after this. But uh, uh, really cool cover. Got this guy, uh, Sorcerer, uh, doing some weird stuff to the Fantastic Four. Uh, we pop over to this and <laughs> really funny. So uh, it says, Words and Pictures, John Byrne. Uh, inks Bjorn Hain, <laughs> which is just, if you just rearrange the letters of John Byrne, you get this. So uh, John's kind of having some fun right here. Uh, so this is Jim Novak on the letters, uh, Glennis Wine on colors, uh, Jim Salakrup as the editor, editor-in-chief, Mr. Jim Shooter. So uh, this issue is kind of very ho-hum, even though it's the start of, uh, of, his, of his legendary run. It's not like I didn't like this issue, it just was... Uh, Kind of a uh, sort of uh, fill-in issue for the most part. Uh, it's still gorgeous John Byrne art, but anyhow, this guy right here, uh, you get a little fun uh, comedic uh, part. He's uh, doing some magic tricks, and he's uh, obviously an enemy of the Fantastic Four. I'm actually not familiar with this guy. Uh, he might be uh, more of an F, uh, an FF uh, foe, uh, which I'm not uh, as familiar with. Uh, but anyhow, he's going to crush the Fantastic Four. And uh, we jump over, uh, Sue is getting her hair done at a salon uh, and when uh, some things go kind of wrong and this uh, sort of uh, dumb assistant. I love the way John Byrne draws women. It's just so iconic. There's something about the way John Byrne draws women that's just great. And this earth monster comes up and essentially attacks Sue. Uh, Sue is not doing so well um, uh, against the earth guy. Uh, on the other side of town, uh, the thing is going out on a date with Alicia Masters. And he gets jumped by a water elemental, and uh, he's not having a great time with it. <laughs> and then on the other other side of New York City, <laughs> uh, the Human Torch is, uh, you know, trying to get back with the squeeze right here, and uh, doesn't end too well when he gets attacked by essentially a Human Tornado. And finally, we catch up with Reed Richards back at the Baxter Building, and uh, oh man, I, you know what? Even though, like, Byrne, like, he draws women really well, one thing that, like, I'm always just, when, when I think of John Byrne, and despite how iconic, like, the way he drew, uh, say, Wolverine or Storm or Cyclops, whoever, I always think of Mr. Fantastic and, and Reed Richards. There's just something in the way that he drew Richards in this run that, uh, to me, it's, like, in my mind. Uh, even though I've seen many different, you know, Reed Richards, this is this is like the iconic Reed Richards to me is the way John Byrne drew him. Uh, I know sacrilege, right? It would be like, what? How dare you, Jack Kirby? <laughs> but I mean, to me, this is this is like I I really like the way he drew Reed Richards. Uh, but yeah, he runs into a fire elemental and uh, he bouncy balls his way out of the building and uh, does a tactical retreat. And as he's uh, Floating along, he notices, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Storm is in trouble too, and he hypothesizes and figures out, you know what, we're being attacked by elementals right now, and uh, they don't really want to uh, fight their analogs, right? So, for example, this fire elemental doesn't really want to fight Human Torch, so the same must be true for the others, right? So Reed's like, okay, I think I know what's going on. We got to kind of like play a little bit of game of rock paper scissors and find the right uh, the right match. So Sue is able to break herself out from getting uh, essentially suffocated, and she has to jump away and, and run away. Uh, the Thing uh, finds himself in a, uh, a convenience store and is able to get an air tank to uh, save himself. Uh, but he has to give up the air tank to a lady who's getting suffocated to save her life. And that's when uh, he's about to get uh, basically jumped again till Sue kind of saves him. And you get into this uh, interesting back and forth. <laughs> Great moment right here with the, uh, the classic, it's clobbering time. Uh, and uh, what happens is Reed is able to kind of uh, get the team together and is able to find each and everyone's weakness. And uh, playing uh, essentially a little bit of Pokemon right here, he chooses the right elemental types. And uh, surprise, it's... Uh, 
It's uh, super effective. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, they're able to defeat all of their analogs, and Reed is kind of pondering. It's like, you know what? I think I know who's the problem here. And the gentleman that we run into in the beginning, uh, who's attempting to skip out of town, uh, gets captured. And when he asks him, asks the Reed Richards the Scooby Doo villain question, he goes, "Well, uh, there's this guy called uh, Doctor Strange. He kind of helped me here." And I actually, I don't know if this is like the beginning of. Uh, of Doctor Strange's, like, his, like, second or his first run? I forget. Uh, but yeah, there's an advertisement for the uh, next Doctor Strange book, so don't miss it. You also get a really nice explanation here by Jim Shooter for why, uh, for the guys uh, who are picking up this uh, this issue this month, right? It's like, hey, you know, John Byrne was on the X-Men. Why is, uh, why is he on Fantastic Four now? Uh, turns out uh, John really wanted <laughs> full control of the X-Men, uh, which is... Uh, you know, fascinating. You can actually read John Byrne's uh, fan comic right now. He's doing it on his website, and it's a it's a uh, Uncanny X Men uh, fan comic. Uh, very interesting. I was gonna do a review of it, not today, uh, but later. Uh, but yeah, yeah, John Byrne did have a different view on the X Men than Claremont. Not sure who I liked more, but I would kind of bend towards Claremont because Byrne. Uh, Byrne was really in love with the original characters a lot, uh, not so much the, the newer characters. Like, he had a big thing for Gene, uh, which is why he was kind of part of the whole X-Factor fiasco, uh, later on in this decade, <laughs> which we'll talk about later, but, yeah, no, Fantastic Four, uh, 232, uh, not a crazy issue, but, uh, you know, very enjoyable and the beginning to a fantastic run, <laughs> uh, for John Byrne on this title. Anyhow, uh, let's get to uh, some channel updates, uh, mainly art, right? So, uh, been doing some art on the side, so some of you might remember this from my uh, Claremont anniversary uh, video. I did a penciled quick of, uh, of Danny Moonstar. I ended up going back and inking and coloring it. Uh, I'm okay with the colors for the most part. Made her leg a little bit longer. <laughs> And uh, have finished up this drawing for the most part. Uh, it's okay. I think if I would redo it again, I think I would rather draw her without the horse. Uh, just because the horse kind of gets in the way and I wasn't like figuring out anatomy correct within here. Uh, but not too bad. I didn't want to talk too long about this because I have more character concept art for my comic book. So I think last time I showed you... Uh, let's see. Showed you the... Da -da 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 -da, the hero. Uh, this is my protagonist that I have. I'm gonna probably do a little bit of a retweak on his design just because the, the shotgun's kind of out of place. Uh, and then I showed the sort of uh, female interest of the story. Uh, you know, probably redesigning her skirt here. Now I'm gonna show you the sidekick. So this is a, a sidekick character. He's heavily influenced on a lot of the uh, manga that I read and kind of grew up with. Uh, not that I'm gonna make a manga-like uh, book uh, but I've, I've always been intrigued by the sort of shonen protagonist archetype, and uh, he kind of embodies some of that. <laughs> and of course, of course, you got to have if it's, it's shonen inspired, you got to have him doing the peace sign. That's that's where it's all out, baby. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, he's kind of a short kid. That's why he's uh, so much smaller. Though I don't know if this proportions is correct, but yeah, uh, the goal here is supposed to be like about 12 or 13 years old, and. Uh, Kind of wanted him to wear the overalls. Uh, makes him look more like he's working in like uh, trains and locomotives, since the uh, the background is a western after all. And then uh, here is the villain. So one of the things I wanted to do with this character was create a color scheme that kind of uh, imbued sort of a royalty kind of feel. So purple and gold kind of do that. You know, purple is is, is sort of a, a color used by royalty and high class, and that's kind of where this villain is coming from. And then I add like some. Uh, some scars to him here and there, uh, give him more of a business-like attire, someone who's clearly of a higher caste. Uh, you can see here uh, kind of my plans for him. He's going to have a little bit of a uh, magic uh, element to him. I don't like these eyes, though. I guess they are freaky. So uh, if there's one thing I, I kind of didn't really like about this, and that is I couldn't get his expression right. So I need to work on this because this is too happy of an expression. A villain should be kind of like menacing and mean, uh, or at least meaner, right? Uh, so I may redo him to give him a, a figure that's more scowling, right? But uh, yeah, no, this is uh, characters for my comic book. Uh, I don't know when I will start, but uh, I did want to kind of pull everybody here and see. 
Uh, what I kind of wanted to do as sort of an experimental run is uh, is do a couple eight page uh, short uh, strips and just offer them digitally for free for people to see what they thought, right? Uh, it's kind of like a no risk investment for you, the, the viewers, you get to read uh, some real short story comics for free. And then for me, I can get some feedback on whether uh, what I'm doing story wise and art wise is going anywhere. Or this is kind of like a waste of fucking time. <laughs> you know, it, it, nothing is ever really a waste of time, uh, but it's good to kind of like get feedback and figure out where you want to go and how to, uh, you know, essentially make the best uh, comic that you can, right? Uh, I mean, the goal ultimately is to entertain people. And if I'm not entertaining people, then, you know, what's the point, right? Uh, it's just a chore to read at that point. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah, that's, uh, that's the update. Those are like my arc for the most part. There's uh, Gaming Moonstar, uh, the kid sidekick, uh, my villain, and of course we reviewed uh, Fantastic Four 232. <laughs> if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. If you got any comments about Fantastic Four 232, uh, my art or this video, leave it down below and I will see you next time.